Hey, aloha everybody and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studios for another episode of Security Matters. Today we have Amanda Utter with us from VTI Security Group. She's an account executive there and I'm really glad she could take some time out to join us in the studio. Uh, well, virtually in the studio anyway. Amanda, thanks for, for coming on today. How you doing? Thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Doing well. Staying home. Good. Are <laughs> uh, you staying home? Uh, you, you have staying kids home. at home as well? I do. Two kids at home, so we're kind of doing shifts, and my husband and I, and you have to make it work, right? Yeah. Are you? Are they getting schooled online as well? Or No, they're two going? and four. They're two and four, okay. so they're busy in a whole different way. <laughs> so yeah. we just have, and, and, to, have to manage that. Is the um, is the hey, I need my mommy time? Is that distracting when you're trying to work? I've seen I've seen a lot of people like have their their kids on their lap while they're doing video and all kinds right. of stuff. It's really cool. Thankfully, you know we're able to we've managed that pretty well by just, we have we take two hour shifts. So I go and I lock myself away in the office, and my husband has the kids, and then we switch and we kind of plan it around conference calls and meetings and obligations. So we figure it That's out. That's awesome. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Um, gotta do it. Well, let's let our audience uh, get to know you a little bit. Um, we first met down at Security Next, and we'll, we'll talk about that later. But the uh, um, just kind of give me a bit of your history as much as you care to share, and sort of fill them on how you end up getting into security and getting uh, you know associated with VTI uh, VTI Security where you are today. Yeah. Well, as far as getting into security, I can't say, I think like a lot of people, I didn't know I was going to get into security. And then once I got in, you kind of stay in, <laughs> right? It's it's a small world. It's um, like a family and you just, you stay in. But I started at VTI about 13 years ago and I went to college for mass communications. So again, nothing security related. I have always been in some form of sales. And so when I started at VTI, I started as an account manager and I started with different accounts than I work with now. Yeah. Of course, over those 13 years, it's migrated into uh, more national accounts, more enterprise accounts, wow. um, some more complex accounts, which I love. I love the pace of it. I love um, the interactions and the relationships and the longer term planning and um, opportunities to to deal with some more complex issues for customers. So that's where I am at VTI and um, very active in our local ASIS chapter as well and um, different you know, SIA events and things like that, which you and I have talked about. So I think that's really helped to um, really get visibility and into the industry further and deeper as far as from an overall um, perspective. So yeah. That's some of my history. Yeah, I, so you're not bragging very well on yourself. You're one of our 20 under 40, was it, award winners? Yes. And I think you were the president of ASIS chapter out there as well? That That is true. I was the president okay. of the local ASIS chapter. And before that, I was the vice chair. And then before that, young professional liaison and very active in women's security initiative here locally for ASIS. That's awesome. So we put on Good. an event every year and we're very, um, we have a large attendance and people look forward to that event each year. And so the whole goal is of course to inspire and promote and empower women in the industry. Wow, and is, that, um, is it geared your session specifically towards women in security? That, is it that sort of thing? But it's a local yeah. as is chapter focus? That's awesome. Yeah, correct. It's, it's in alignment with the, the International Women in Security Initiative, but it is a local chapter focus. And we do outreach to different colleges and student organizations because part of the initiative is how do we get more women into the industry? How do you keep them in the industry? How do you help to um, elevate them and give them the education and inspiration they need to move forward? Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, the sort of the the messaging that we've had for years was like me, all these old bald guys like sitting around a table, <laughs> like we we're the security gurus, like which right. is not very appealing to anyone else. You know what I mean? So we, I think we we felt too closed up for a long time, and it's um, mm -hmm. I think it's kind of hurt our industry right now when we're competing for a technology workforce, and you know, there's other far uh, well, technology's fun. There's a lot of fun ways to go play. And, you know, security is right. kind of like, you know, if you don't know about our technology and all the really the great things we do to sort of service our customers, protect lives, protect property, 
you know, you think we're guards and guns and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, and so right. your um, are your events, um, what sort of uh, messaging has, has resonated, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you, when you put those on? Yeah, so the events, we, we don't want to focus on the technical aspects as much of the industry. Okay. We focus more on um, more of how do it's it's maybe tactful self promotion at work it's leadership okay. skills it's ah. um learning more of the business and how to you know communication business challenges for women um but it's it's all a positive tone and so it's just really with the goal of to inspire we keep we don't we don't look at any product specific content in those events sure. you know it's really just around how can we help bring women together in a community and help them to give them the tools that they need to advance really in their careers but in this case it's in the security industry and how do we highlight any any women that are in the industry now who have helped to pave the way we have a panel discussion we have um we'll bring in a keynote but it's around how can we learn from other women how can we um learn from experiences and take things away to apply to our own lives and kind of bring that into what does that look like in our work life integration as well right so sure and that, that foundational stuff is kind of missing for a lot of people is there if they're younger mm -hmm. and just getting into the workforce or been out of college a little while trying to find a career path they haven't right. often gotten do they do they do, i'm sure you probably get feedback do they um, have they come across some of that empowerment from other women in other places before or for, for some time for some of them is it almost new like wow this is amazing thank you it is it's new and we found we've been doing this for a number of years it's, i think we're on our like our ninth event and the women wow. keep coming back and they're telling other people in their companies and you have large corporations that are knocking down our door to sponsor you know they get ah. wind of it and they're saying we want to sponsor this we want our name tied to this kind of to your point this is becoming an initiative not only in our industry but in business right in general and so these women are i think you're onto something where it's something that it's not the, like that that leadership the leadership skills and the communication skills and the ability to um you know promote yourself and not feel badly about it or whatever it is that stuff isn't talked about and it kind of goes to what we'll talk about in a little bit here but it's it's beyond the technical side of things mm. that needs to be focused on in order to yeah, yeah, bridge that gap yeah yeah, and I mean, the, the hard skills can all be taught, right? The technology you can right. learn once you get in the role, the tricks to bring your whole self to the role, be rewarded yes. for it, be willing to share. Um, it's it's all those ideas that we're, we're missing out on if we don't have a, a different voices in the room, you know, as I alluded to. Right. Our industry got, I think, really sort of just top heavy. And I'm not sure if it was because it was like exiting law enforcement and or exiting military. And I don't, I don't know where if it's probably the 70s or 80s or how it's, got the way it is but it just it there just wasn't i think open arms or open invitations to other diverse uh, members of the workforce out there until it seems like these last several years you guys are if you've been doing this for nine years you're way ahead of the the at least the yeah. national curve <laughs> right definitely when we are and so i think a lot of the other chapters have looked to us to say you know what are you doing we want to look at setting up our own event or organization around a women in security initiative can we tap into you for some ideas and how did you get that started so yeah to your point we we're kind of on the front end of that curve yeah wow that's amazing and is um so how is representation there in the in the companies around like at vti and the other companies in minneapolis mm -hmm. and that you know since you've got this sort of little bit of a lead i think on what some of the other you know national organizations have done um would you say compared to other companies that you run into are are women better represented in in the the, the companies there or, or do you know do you have a sort of visibility on that i think as far as the I think overall what I can say is the trend I've seen is women are more represented across the board, right? Like there's oh, awesome. the attendance has the attendance has grown, the number of women from any given organization that's in attendance has grown. I think we have people from all aspects of business from integration, from manufacturers, from end users, whatever it is and the the overall the presence continues to grow. 
So I think we're seeing mm-hmm. a curve there, which is encouraging overall. Yeah, that's excellent. Wow, we uh, this is um, I think should, could be some good data to share with the um, you know the Women's Security Forum group at SIA. Yeah. You know some of those yeah, successes, absolutely. so we can uh, maybe get some guidance from you guys, like what, kind of what's worked. What are the what are those hot topics that work? I love the mentoring thing. You know, I've talked to guys, and we had this discussion last year at the steering committee. You know that there's there's a lot of guys who are, like afraid to mentor women. They like really like <laughs> what are you afraid of? Like you need right, to pass yeah. on your your connections and your, you know, the, the, the things that you've learned, the th- you know, the people, you know, the, the glue that makes you part of the industry, you've got to be able to hand that off to other people. What does it matter if it's a man or a woman? Like you, you've got right. to do these things. Or are you just going to sit in that desk till you're 90? I mean, security mm-hmm. people are passionate, right? So they, I know right. why they keep working, but it's like, dude, yes, go retire yeah. and go fishing or something. I want to retire. My wife says I'd retire any day, but she's not going to pay me. <laughs> so I'm not, I can't afford to retire. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll say, you know, the, the, at this event and just in general, what I'm seeing out there is there are so many men who are huge advocates, huge mentors of these women and who are totally just completely promoting this sort of event and who are completely on board. And so that it's so great to see you have that mixed bag. And, you know, a lot of men, I shouldn't say, well, not a lot, but a number of men attend the event. Yes, you know, yeah. and are really engaged and are actually on the committee to help plan and feel passionately about it, you know, so it's, it's fun. Yeah, it's so good. And we have as men, we have to be taught how to talk as well and how, you know, how to have these conversations because we can't, uh, I've talked about this before, none of us can really leave our biases behind us, right? So if we have them, we just need to acknowledge them. And that's, it's okay to have them. And we talk through mm-hmm. those, you know, but it's, um, I think men are, some men I've talked to who are just afraid they'll be they'll be taken wrong or they'll be mistaken and uh, right. or, or mistakenly yeah. taken out of context. It's like hey, you just you just ask questions about those things and you can work through it. You know, we want to find That's this true. ground where we can all be productive, right? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, it's um, we're getting about the midway. Let's uh, we'll take a break. We'll pay some bills and then we're going to come back and talk about some good to great stuff. We'll be back in one minute Sounds with Amanda great. Utter. Aloha, I'm Keisha King, host of Crossroads in Learning on ThinkTech Hawaii. On Crossroads in Learning, our guest and I discuss all aspects of education here in Hawaii and throughout the country. You can join us for stimulating conversations to enrich, enliven, and educate. We are streamed live on ThinkTech bi-weekly at 4 p.m. on Mondays. Thanks so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. Aloha. Hey, aloha, welcome back to Security Matters. We're with Amanda Utter today from VTI Security. And if you're in the industry across this country, you know what a great company this is. So I think we might get some of the secret sauce of how they got to be so great from Amanda, if we can coax it out of her today. Amanda, thanks for joining us today. Um, You gave a great presentation at Security Next down in New Orleans. Uh, I was sitting next to Maureen Carlo. We just kept, we kept, elbows like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. This is exactly what people need to hear. So um, give me a little bit of the genesis of, of that talk, where it came from. And I didn't know if it was yeah. something that you did internally or uh, let's talk about sort of the background of how you ended up on that stage that day. Sure. I'll try to sum it up a little bit. So I started, I was asked to speak at the Young Professional, um, the new Young Professional event at SIA in Minneapolis. Oh, SIA Rise. Okay. Accelerize. Accelerize. Yep. Accelerize. And so yeah. I spoke on, I was approached to speak on exceptional customer service. And so I ended up talk. I did a talk there on exceptional customer service. And then from there, that talk led to me going to New Orleans and speaking on broadening it up a little bit, talking about exceptional customer service was part of the talk, but it's really mm-hmm. what bridges that gap from good to great. And it's, it's exceptional customer service along with a couple other things that really kind of, you have this pool of companies that are really good. And then you have those companies that are looked at as great. And not only the companies, but individuals. 
right? What can what can we do as individuals to bridge that gap as well? Yeah, awesome. in our business. Sure, yeah. exactly. And, so and then can we? In, yeah, and and so what was the um what was the uh, sort of uh, push? Did did Paul Paul reached out? Paul did he see you at Accelerize Ragusa and then say, hey, you got to come down and talk? Or was did you, you did know, you come up with the topic or did he have an idea in mind? We kind of collaborated on it to come up with the topic to take what I did at SIA and expand it a little bit further to kind of that overall good to great concept. So yeah, we just yeah. kind of went back and forth. I know Paul from the past and that, you know, 20 under 40. And so I knew that event was coming up. And so he's like, yeah, you know, I'm putting together the speaker roster and getting things together. So yeah, it's good timing. Let's, let's do it. That's awesome. And so yeah. give us, uh, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about the good companies versus the great ones. You know, the, <laughs> yeah. the good ones, they get the, they get the, let's just say they get the, what, the four, two to four, six sort of grades on their, uh -huh. on their survey monkeys from their customers or whatever, right? They don't yeah. get the five O's very much, right? They might get a five O on a person or a five O on a certain service uh, uh, outcome or something, but you know, by and large, yeah. they're good. You know, they're good. They're doing good work. Mm -hmm. They're keeping their customers happy. What's, what's, uh, what's the impetus for them to, you know, what would push them to want to really be great? Well, I think you ultimately you what we have is our reputation, right? And so mm. your reputation, what you have to do in order to maintain that's I mean, especially now more than ever, that's highlighted, right? So I think getting yeah. back to basics, getting just back to the basics of, I mean, let's face it, we're in the industry of technology, like we provide okay. technology solutions to fit a need, but that's not enough. Because so does so does the next company we all provide yeah. technology solutions i'd say in my case an integrator so what do we need to do and it's a lot of that how are you delivering those products and what makes you different and it's focusing on it's not rocket science it's focusing on a few things like exceptional customer service and building your brand and being aware of your brand and then mm. how are you how are you managing the work and integrating that into your life? And there are some of these overarching concepts that if you focus on those and are consistent with those, that's what bridges the gap. And I think so many times we can lose sight of it and it, because there are such simple things, but they're not easy to do, to implement, mm. you know, say 80% of the time and be consistent with it. But the companies that are, when they're, when you're practicing that daily, that ultimately becomes your identity. That's who you are. That's what people are talking about when you're not around. That's your reputation. And so Ooh. right now, right now, more than ever, that's highlighted. And so that's mm -hmm. going to show. And so I would say if you're getting, if you're a 4.2 out of five, you have got to get back to basics and you have got to start delivering and focusing on these few kind of key, key concepts. Is, um, I, so this is my habit. I should talk about it. So my habit is to, to not ask questions first, right? I tend to walk in. I've been doing this so long. I know what you need to do, blah, blah, blah. Terrible approach, obviously, right? The, <laughs> this, the, the, the questioning of, yeah, myself, people don't let me in the room anymore, just so we're clear. Um, <laughs> the, uh, but the, the questioning approach to, to anything, actually, to get to know someone first, to find out what's important to them, what makes them tick, um, is, is that teachable to someone like me that struggles with it, you know, in, in, in that first thing to want to know uh, about other, want to know about what others' concerns are instead about what my technology can do to solve your problem. Yeah, you know, I think so. And I think another way to reframe that too is whether it's asking questions or listening to what it is that they say mm. first or the question they ask you, because here's the thing. And somebody gave me this example and it couldn't be more right on. Let's look at like Disney, right? So here's an example of that. Somebody in at Disney World asks a Disney World employee, what time is the parade? And instead of saying, 12 o'clock, the parade's at noon, they would say, well, the parade starts at noon, but you'd want to be, you know, over the hill by that tree by 1130 before it gets too crowded. I see you have a couple of young kids. And so you'll want to make sure that you cross the street by 1245, just before the parade is over. So you get, you know, get out of the mass amount of crowds or whatever it is. So instead of just saying the parade starts at noon, 
you hear their question, but you're able to then anticipate what's what they're really asking. What mm. is really going to, how can you take it to the next level to give them really what they need? Because if you say at noon, you know, they're going, okay, well now where should I go? Where should I sit? When should I take my kids across the street so I don't get bombarded by the people when it's over? Think it through further. Don't just mm. give them a one word answer and make them ask you next. Because if you ah. do that, you are going to be way ahead of the person behind you and the person that was there before you. And they're going to, that's immediately going to put them at ease and say that that's going to establish some immediate trust and some immediate mm. credibility. That's the quickest thing to do. So if you, and that takes some work and that takes some training of yourself to do that. But if you're aware of that and can start trying to practice that, that's a skill that will take you, that'll take you far. Yeah, that, that's great advice. I um reminds me of the, you know, you ask somebody, hey, where's this place? And they go, go up two streets, take a right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, where's the place? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me out here, you Tell know? me where it is. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Yeah. You know, it's so weird. That, that's good advice. <clears throat> um, how, how do companies um, teach that, you know, internally? I know, uh, I don't know what, you know, the experience at DTI has been, but obviously you've been there a while. It must be, you know, a great place to work. The other folks I've met that I, I know from the industry that work there are great. And so is it, mm -hmm. is this something that you guys practice and teach? Like when you onboard new people, hey, here's the, here's what our core values are. This is the way we enact them or bring them to our customer. How do you, mm -hmm. how do you make that a culture wide sort of uh, practice? Yeah. So I think you hit it. Culture is huge. Core values are huge. VTI, as you know, um, has, we speak about our core values. We write about the core values or talked about consistently. But the thing is, is that everybody has to, carry those out then in their own way, mm. yet still representing the company, right? And so you can have, that's the risk is that you can have, you could have an employee that completely poisons the pot because they're not living those core values and then your reputation's mm. at risk, right? So upon hiring, you have to, I think, and VTI is very good about this as far as how they approach interviewing, but really making sure that this person is going to fit the culture and it's going to be the right fit for them as well versus mm -hmm. focusing on yes they have to have a technical aptitude and they have to you know have depending on what what they're interviewing for technical skills but more importantly i think this is me this is me saying this but is that are they a good fit culturally because they have to be able to live those core values and then how those come out on an individual basis or on a, i'm in sales so on a salesperson basis is different we all might approach our book of businesses a little bit different but our core values remain the same and so that's kind of the glue that holds it together let's talk a little bit about that poisonous person first of all how how long do you tolerate that you know when you see someone runs a foul of some core values and offer them a little training um how quickly do you need to weed that out because i think a lot of businesses fire too slowly that's just my yeah opinion. yeah i think so too and i can't take you know i'm i think from my perspective i think you have to weed it out quickly because again, especially regardless of what role they're in, even if they're not external customer facing, I think sometimes we discount that. Well, they're not external customer facing, mm. so maybe it's not as important. I would argue that it still is extremely important because they're they're then um, poisoning internally, right? As well, and yeah. they're, they're reaching out, and you have valued employees that are now being impacted by this by this poison. But um, certainly also if you have people that are external facing, that's a whole nother challenge because now that again is the face of, they are a face of your company. And um, then, and your reputation, it all goes back to your reputation and people talk, this industry is small, mm. business in general is small, your name and the name of your company is out there and it's associated with whatever it is you're doing. Ah, uh, so good. I love the I love the insight about the internal customer. You know, we serve our our clients, but we also mm -hmm. serve each other, For and those sure. core values have to have to resonate in, in uh you know in both directions, right? Or it's just you know, and everybody has an off day. You're you're allowed an off day or an off moment. Yeah, but, absolutely. But overall, For sure. we, yeah, everybody's gonna yeah. have that. But we need we need those values intact. Um, yeah. so we're getting down near the end. Um, give us some um, if you could take a minute or so and give us the see what do i want to pull from this like the i guess the, the 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 top line advice that you would have for companies that are sort of struggling you know that they're a good company but they really would like to be great maybe the mm -hmm. couple couple 
couple of tasks they could focus on or a couple of things you think um, might be helpful for them uh, to, to do better in our industry? Yeah, I think I'm going to go back to basics around focus on that customer experience, focus on being accountable okay. and reliable and problem solving for your customers, focus on building a brand that is consistent, focus on building that around some core pillars and values and make sure that you have the employees that fit that mold. And I would say really focus on how you can help support your employees in um, kind of just mm. that work life integration and that because then we, you'll have happier employees you're able to be flexible while establishing some sort of means to measure um, performance and metrics and um, what people are responsible to do for their jobs but i think really getting back to some of those basics on focusing of being reliable doing what you're going to say you're going to do every time both internally and externally again and um, that accountability and being problem solvers for your for your customers and you have to add you have to add value you have to be able you mm. can't be hard to do business with that's the other thing <laughs> you could deliver an exceptional product and product but if you're hard to do business with people will move on and you'll lose customers awesome thank you that's that's great advice be easy to do business with amanda yeah. thank you so much for your time today i thank really you. appreciate it thank all you right, we'll talk soon. i appreciate it sounds good all right aloha everybody take care out there be safe Wash your hands. <laughs>